There's a lot of ways to describe what I do. Some people call it community-based art. Some people just throw it in some kind of contemporary art category. I like to think of what I do as a black geographic praxis. Like it's black geography as a verb. You know, I, I live in a certain place and time and all the work I do is essentially turning black collectivity, black celebration, black presence into form. It rises from a community need and desire and a community voice. We heard all the gunfire and I just grabbed my chest. In my particular practice, I really like to wed community organizing and civic happenings with art practice. I was born in Oregon. I grew up and down the West Coast between Washington, Oregon, and California. And so a lot of the need I see is coming from my own position as a great-grandchild of the Great Migration, right? So black people arriving to the West Coast and essentially making place here. We have so many needs. The need to celebrate ourselves, the need to hone and keep our histories, our family histories, our neighborhood histories. There's a need to spatialize community memory in this place, in a place that is built on constantly pushing out black people. So this is a print that I've been working on for two years now. The title, Black Life and Black Spatial Imaginaries, Glimpses Across Time and Space. Each of these have like a element that's from the present and from the past. So this is the lower Mississippi River going all the way up to St. Louis. And then this is LA, Portland, and Seattle. So this is about the migration from the alluvial plains of the Mississippi River westward following I-5 that's connecting these three cities. Looks like Superman ice cream. I love growing up on the West Coast. We have such wide slices of sky. And so I've always really taken to dusk and dawn in a particular way. And so I've kind of been geeking out on making these like circle gradients and I think of them as kind of a snapshot of black imagination under a particular sky. Oh yes. I like making things that can have a life away from me with people in their everyday. I like that they would carry their groceries or their books in a tote bag. I like that they would pass along a zine that I made that somebody that doesn't even live in my city can read. So I've done screen printing since I was like 15 in my neighborhood screen printing shirts and printmaking is just totally accessible and it's like such a democratic wonderful form <laughs> right now i'm working on a project that's called a black art ecology takes place and that we actually had a portrait of keaton in the middle like okay. and it's really the culmination of years of research and community organizing and relationships it's the original animation. So it'll be low tech in that way, but. It's a project that conceptually takes the mid-century logic of blight, that black people are a detriment to an urban ecology and need to be excised from the map, like some kind of disease. Hello and welcome to the closed caption podcast exhibition, Black Life On Air. Made Which we have seen time and time again here in Portland, be it the Memorial Coliseum or Emanuel Hospital, or now with the, the gentrification that in some ways would like to make a plaque or a mural rather than having a black family next door. It takes that logic of blight and counters it and says it's false and acknowledges that black people have always been a thriving contribution to place. And so to put resources in the hands of artists and communities to continue breathing life into a place. It's not only making art, making videos, making projections, it's simultaneously building the infrastructure that you want that art to exist in. In terms of actual physical things that happen, it's a range. 
I'm working with PCRI to do some public art on their new King Parks building. It's at the corner of Rosa Parks Boulevard and Martin Luther King Boulevard. Also working with the Portland Institute of Contemporary Art to give space and resources to black artists in their space, which is on Vancouver and Williams, very gentrified streets. In some metrics, we could even say that Williams is the most gentrified street in the most gentrified city of the century. So what does it mean to hand over resources to black artists, curators, and creatives in a space that has like free rent for 20 years? It's actually looking at not only community fabric as form, but looking at institutional infrastructure as form and what it means for an institution to lend their resources so that black people can make their own self-determined infrastructure. Same story about like their community. I think of the projects and the relationships that I have within this piece it's not attempting to say that it's the entire black art ecology of Portland, it's a black art ecology. It's really just acknowledging the networks and underground root system that forms a community and that it is the life force in this place. I think Sharita really gives you a, a platform and, uh, for what to do now and moving forward. The way she's able to like not just do it, but do it on this type of scale, I think, is very impressive and very necessary. Sharita is tremendously important to the Portland art scene because she's an artist who's really focused on process and bringing her community along with her. I hope the exhibit inspires people to act. There's a certain amount of catharsis and healing that comes through collaborating. There's just this exponential force that bubbles up when we put our heads and minds and hearts together that is the form. If a sculptor makes a sculpture and then there's dust scattered across the studio, to me it's like if I put up an exhibition, it's like the relationships and the laughter of the people is the dust that's scattered around the artwork. I hope that this work endures. I hope to see more spaces designated for black creatives and community. I hope that the future of this work is more and more spatialized transformation of the place that we live in, and it honors and centers black life. <laughs>